This episode of the Sleuthcast is brought to you by the Mankini Barbecue Company. Did you forget to wish your dad a happy Father's Day? Make Uh it up to him by getting one of the great seasonings over at the Mad Canadian BBQ.com. Great season to over there to make it up to your father, such as the, the coffee and Q, the Cajun, the smoked, the two border, or the old fashioned. Can't go wrong with any of these great seasonings over at the Mad Canadian BBQ.com. While you're over there, be sure to use that promo code SLOOPCAST10 for 10% off your entire order so you can order more seasonings for your father. Med Canadian Barbecue Company, where they have your butt covered. This episode of the Sloopcast is also brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Listen, did you really forget? Did you super forget? Well, you better get him some barbecue seasonings and you better get him some coffee as well. And where else better to buy your coffee uh, than from the Iron Bean Coffee Company? When you support the Iron Bean Coffee Company, you're supporting a company that puts integrity first. And of course it does. It's a marine owned company. Uh, All of their coffee is fair trade certified. It is USDA certified organic. Their coffee is all fresh roasted to order. So it's not roasted then sitting on a shelf for weeks or months at a time. So your dad's getting the best possible coffee, freshest possible coffee, uh, the most moral possible coffee. And oh, by the way, it all by, by some happy coincidence of doing everything right. It tastes real good. It tastes real good. Uh, it's it's a be- some of the best possible coffee you can buy. And of course, like I said, you're supporting marine owned and integrity based and Ohio based. Uh, what what's 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 the downside here? Um, you could, if you really want to go above and beyond, even get them a subscription. So you get them coffee all year. Think about it. It's a thing you could do. Anyway, you can look at some of the different coffees over at ironbeancoffee.com by going to ironbeancoffee.com. And I'll I'll talk about some of the different coffees in the later ad reads. But for now, you can go to ironbeancoffee.com. That's Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. What's up, YouTube? How's it going, everybody? Hope everyone had a great weekend. I hope one person in particular had a great weekend. Yeah. Yeah. One person. Yeah. Well, it, one person. In, I hope everyone had a good weekend. Okay. There's one person in particular, however. His well, last name starts with two. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, well, we will definitely get into that. That's, uh, one of the things we'll be talking about today. This episode is also brought to you by <laughs> pronunciation guides. Pronunciation. <laughs> pronunciation guides brought to you by pronunciation guides. <laughs> All right. All right. Let's let's get into it, Jared. We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sleep Guys Everything Today, Kyle. That was really quick, Jared. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm right here. How are you? <laughs> I just sort of I, like, how are you doing today, Kyle? Just sort of morphed into like one sound as well. Like, I, I really just sort of. Blah, 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 blah. I'm all right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good weekend here, as um, Jared um, mentioned in our um in our YouTube section there that it's hoping that one person in particular even had a better weekend as JT. we get into our, into our recruiting updates here. So we're going to talk a little bit about some recruiting updates and in, including a very specific person who landed in Columbus over the weekend. Um, a potential uh, transfer appears to have been enrolled at Ohio state. A, another rumor of a Ohio state, another recruit coming to Ohio state and might be playing this fall as well as just some other names and maybe even a potential flip watch. Might, we might be on flip watch. We might have a player on flip watch. It might be a cornerback and it might not be the cornerback who we were afraid was on flip watch a a couple weeks ago. So it's always fun with those corners. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go ahead and start with uh, the man of the weekend here, JT Tui Mulau. Nice. Coming to Columbus over the weekend, had a um, 
just a warm welcome with <laughs> with police officers and um, coaches the and media. Just, it, just the whole the whole coaching crew came out just with everything they had to welcome JT to um, the Columbus Airport. And John, hey, we call it John Glenn now. I know you've been out of Columbus for a while. All right. We call it John Glenn now. All right. We'll call, all right. Coming to John Glenn. <laughs> and, hope, and hoping to. Wow. Solidify, and hoping to solidify him coming to Ohio State. Yeah. Um, <laughs> he uh, that, there was definitely a, a shoot for a wow factor there. Um, it's not a coincidence that uh, the entire media, the entire Ohio State media contingent knew exactly when he would be landing in Columbus. And it, it was it was not an accident. Let's 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 all be very clear about that. It was an open secret. Um, uh, they were pretty much asked by the coaching staff to show up and make a deal about it. And that's exactly what happened. Um, the coaches all showed up wearing Hawaiian style Ohio State polos, which, by the way, those sold out once they hit fanatic, they sold out like instantly, like within like 20 minutes, I think I saw. And by yeah, they sold out um, uh, instantly. And by the way, the fact that they sold out instantly was a thing advertised to JTT when they started talking about NIL. They go, yeah. hey, just imagine had those been branded with your name, you'd already be making money. Yeah. And, and and that's the thing moving forward here. We we are now, Jared, in a new age. Yeah. With NIL. And we're already seeing Ohio State. It, they, they've been putting this together for who who knows how long it, they've right. been working. They've got to been working on this for a long time. They already have a plan laid out of s- specific players doing specific things, signings, whatever the case may be to get their name out there and had a, had a game plan already before JTT came into Columbus and just laid it out all in front of them there. Yeah. I, I believe Mark Pantone a few weeks ago said that basically NIL could make up to 50% of their presentation now. And that's, that's enormous. Uh, There's no shortage uh, of money around Ohio state, both in Columbus, big city, lots of money here. Um, And also Ohio state has the largest living alumni base at least in the country. The largest living alumni base is in Columbus, or excuse me, uh, from Ohio State. There's money to go around, I I think is the point here. Um, They have laid out plans for like Ohio State sponsored signing sessions, like autograph signing sessions that would not only help the upper tier players, but also the lower tier players, because it would be like a package deal where they'd send a bunch of guys out. Um, Ohio State has been quiet. Like Ryan Day spent his quarantine after the season ended, obviously. Ryan Day spent his quarantine studying up on NIL because they're not like leaving this up to some lawyer or some private company person. To, to do these demonstrations, no. Ryan Day is giving these NIL presentations, and believe me when I say that matters. Mm-hmm. Um, Ohio State, I, I don't know. I'm not saying Ohio State's doing it better than everyone else right now, but no one's doing it better. No one's doing, no one's more prepared for this than Ohio State right now. No one's more prepared than to safely get money into the hands of their student athletes the moment it becomes legal. No yeah, one is I mean, better prepared than Ohio State right now. I mean, it, even even with everything that's happened the past year about showing that the coaching and and uh, and everybody supporting the Ohio State football program the past year, just showing them how much everybody cares about the student athletes themselves, themselves there trying to get them to play last year, trying to be that voice. And it's, it's an additional uh, just positive thing to really enforce or really to bring out to 
uh, these recruits here. Well, and, you know, it's not just about putting money in their hands. They're also trying to put money into their hands safely. Like Ohio State will be setting up LLCs on behalf of these students to make sure that their taxes are, you know, able to be taken care of properly and everything else. So um, Ohio State, uh, again, there might be teams out there doing just a good job. You know, I have to imagine that Bama has their ducks in a row and some of the other bigger com- programs have their ducks in a row. But so, so the, the, a couple of things that kind of goes through my mind here. I know that we're wanting to talk about, uh, about JTT. including updates here, but really like this whole NIL. Well, thing, you, like, you can't at this point. It's not a separate topic, Kyle. Yeah. The So this NIL, like, can is this the start of I mean, it, it is going to be the start of really separating the big dogs, the blue, the blue collar start, team, blue collar, but just Kyle college football has always been that. Well, I, I think it even separates it even more or yeah. even bring in front to some teams who hasn't really been all that good in recent years too. I'm looking like at USC, maybe yeah. at UCLA, maybe even, maybe even that team up North too. Maybe this might finally help them get more recruits, better recruits coming in to Ann Arbor. So first off, the rich will get richer. Like that, that's just how it works. No matter how you change the rules, the big programs with lots of money and a strong desire to win will find out how to, well, they'll find out first and manipulate it best to make sure they stay in front. So the rich will get richer. They have the resources to figure it out. They have the resources to implement it. Whatever it is, they'll figure it out. The rich will get richer. That being said, who this really benefits in my mind? Big market teams. Yes. Um, Also teams with influential alumni. Oregon's about to become a powerhouse. Yeah. You can't underestimate the Nike connection with Oregon now. Maryland. with that, a that's why, that's why my, the first one that I said, that's why the first one I said is like USC, like just how influential I, where they're at right now. I, I really I, think they can really benefit. I get this. that they're in Los Angeles, but does Los Angeles care? Like I get that Los Angeles really cared about USC when Pete Carroll was there because Pete Carroll embraced Los Angeles, but also because like there weren't any professional teams in in Los Angeles at the time, there are now two. Um, and you and like Californians, Los Angelinos, they care about what's popular at the time. So I they're fickle, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. Uh, so I don't know. Does, does L.A. care about USC anymore? I, I don't know the answer to that question. But again, <laughs> They they might be they might be the same with um, Miami fans only yeah. when they're good. Yeah, I, I think that's a legitimate thing to consider. Um, I think this helps Texas a lot. Um, teams that can essentially buy their way in now will might be able to buy their way in now. Um, the rich will get richer, and I do think I, I feel like it could benefit Rutgers a lot, simply because. The advertising center of the world is New York City. Now, yeah, how many people? The other thing that kind of um, was in my mind too is like, what team can really benefit the New York area? And I think you hit it, like Rutgers, maybe even, maybe even to a degree, maybe Syracuse as well. Yeah, I, I mean, maybe Syracuse not, maybe is not upstate. In football, maybe not in football, but sure. But it's not like we joke that. Rutgers isn't really New York City, despite the fact the Big Ten tries to tell us otherwise, because it's like 20 miles away and in New Jersey. But like Syracuse isn't any isn't any closer. Hey, it's all good. You This is a benefit, not a requirement. You don't you don't have to. I, I, I think I really want to dig more into the NIL, but um, let's let's oh, talk about let's We'll be let's, talking about NIL all summer, but man, we'll be talking about NIL all summer. But let's let's talk about the recruits. I apologize. I hear a big storm coming through. So if I you nope. lose me, Jared, you, nope. you know what happened. So no, you're you're not you're you're not allowed. Tell your internet and tell the storm that it can wait an hour. All right. All right, Jared. JTT. 
in Columbus. Yeah, JTT uh, in Columbus as we are talking about this. He'll be in Eugene, Oregon by the time we release this. Um, but I, I don't I don't consider Oregon an actual threat. This is all about Ohio State and Bama. And that's it to me. It's it's Ohio State and Bama. Uh, and even then, I feel real good about Ohio State still. I've basically had JTT penciled into the Ohio State 2021 recruiting class for months. And I'm I'm not veering off of that. Um, it's not to say that Bama shouldn't be taken seriously, because they should be, because they're Bama, damn it. <laughs> That's it. Like, they're Bama. And you want to talk about the rich getting richer, Bama will not be outspent. Bama will not be outspent. The, they'll take care of all of their kids from an NIL perspective. You don't got to worry about that. B- Bama Bama's going to be just fine. But if, to me, if you're Ohio State, how do you combat Bama? Kyle, how do you, how do you combat Bama? JTT says, to, so you're having a long meeting with JTT, and eventually he or maybe one of his parents say to you, why you instead of Bama? What do you say? So depends depends on if I want to be the, if I want to do the, the good way or the or the not so good way. The, the not so good way would be like where where we seen um, people are going after one of our assistant coaches. Like, oh, he's getting old, going to retire. Yeah, you could do that way with Alabama. How much longer is Saban going to be at Alabama? But the second way too, kind of what you said about a bigger market. Columbus is much bigger market than Tuscaloosa. Yeah, you're going to get a lot. You're going to get a lot more attention. Let's there's a lot. There's a lot more. Let's, Headquarter big let's say, companies in let's, Columbus. Let's say this bluntly: there's a hell of a lot more money in Ohio than there is in Alabama. That too. That's it, it's just it's just facts. Um, to me, I think the argument goes like this: Kyle, do you know who the last five defensive rookies of the year were in the in the in the NFL? You don't got to um, name all five of them. In fact, you can really just name three of them. Bosa. Can you name three of them? Bosa. I'll just say Bosa. Bosa twice. <laughs> and Chase Young. Yes. Larry Johnson has coached three of the last five defensive rookies of the year in the NFL. All of those players drafted in the top 10. Where was Nick? Where was Nick Bosa drafted? Were they all drafted in the top five? Joey yeah, and Chase were both drafted in the top five. I'm going to look at Nick. No, he was definitely top five. Nick Bosa was also. Top, I know he was top 10. I think he was top five. I'm, I'm just going to look here. Look he it up, was, Kyle. Look it up. I haven't done that. I, sh- I, sh- I should. I should know this, but no, he was definitely. Yeah. Pick number two. Yeah. He was, high, he was higher than his brother. His brother was number three, I believe. That sounds about right. And because Zeke was two, I, if I remember, I might not be remembering correctly. Um, <laughs> point here is that you have Larry Johnson, who has coached three of the last five defensive rookies of the year. That's not to say that Alabama doesn't put defensive ends into the NFL. They do. Alabama puts everyone into the NFL. But Kyle, na- name, name, uh, name a defensive end from Alabama, or uh, during the Nick Saban era, who's dominated the NFL. I, you can't think of one. It's okay. That's that's fine. You you can't. One I can think of, and I know it's not Alabama, but Miles Garrett. But that was that was um. Like, Texas like- A&M. Yeah, yeah, it was it was not yeah. Alabama. <laughs> yeah, it's not. I didn't say no. SEC. There have been plenty of dominant defense events from the SEC. That was that yeah. definitely not Miles Garrett. Um, yeah. Point here is that Bama puts guys into the NFL at every position, but Ohio State makes stars, superstars, top five, top three draft picks who go on to get defensive rookies of the year. That's who Ohio State. By the way, Kyle. Ohio State also owns of the last five. They also own one of the fourth. He just wasn't 
coached by Larry Johnson. Yes. <laughs> put put in the comments if you know who I'm talking about. He he I'll, 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 he played corner. That doesn't narrow it down. But uh, and he's also on the same was was is on the same team with Miles Garrett. Now see now you just gave it away. <laughs> that that was too far. That was too far, Kyle. <laughs> There's lots of Buckeyes playing corner in the NFL. Only one of them's currently playing for Cleveland. All right. All right. Um, to kind of sum it up, the JTT uh, weekend went really well. Um, I think I think Ohio State did all they can to try to win him over. He's still going to do his, his visits. Like Jared said, he's going to be in Oregon uh, as we're releasing this. Be in Alabama. I think his last visit is going to be in Alabama. Yep. He already did Washington already. He also so. did USC already. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't so. consider again. I don't consider any of those schools threats except for Bama. Yep. So it's just kind of a wait and see. Now you you did all you can, and you're just going to wait and see. Now, Jared, Twitter kind of Twitter kind of erupted Friday. I think it was Friday uh, of a particular player who's transferring out of USC that appear to appears to now be enrolled as an Ohio State student. A, for, a former five-star number one uh inside linebacker at the at the time of his recruiting. Yeah. Come on, you've been practicing it. You can do it. <laughs> Come I was on. waiting to see if you're gonna try or me. Um and you of course we're talking about Alie Naoteote. Nice. As, as we used to say on the show, Jared, we'll get better next episode. <laughs> yeah. Not Ote Ote. Yeah. Don't mm -hmm. don't let that G throw you. Not Ote Ote. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he will immediately walk into the linebacker room and be able to compete for a linebacker spot. Um, he's not automatically going to get a linebacker spot. Let's let's be very clear about that. Um, he's good. Uh, I, I, but he's not, he did not live up to that five star hype. Let's, let's just be very blunt about that. Um, if he did, he'd be in the NFL by now. Instead, he's transferring as a graduate transfer, looking, looking for other opportunities elsewhere. Uh, and that, that's okay. That's, that's fine. Um, but like I said, he, he did not live up to that five star hype, but he's coming to Columbus. He's going to try and, you know, new system new coaches, see if he can't turn things around. And again, um, he has a real opportunity with Ohio State returning zero of their linebackers from last season. Mm -hmm. He has a real opportunity. Yeah, and, th and this and this is this is a kid too during the recruiting process. It was between Ohio State and USC. Now ultimately he did choose USC and yeah we'll we'll, we'll see we'll see how he does if all of this appears to be true and he if he is going to be wearing the scarlet and gray this fall. And by the way, just as a as a side note, Ohio State's becoming one of the pro, uh, predominant destinations. I don't know how this happened because it used to be like a USC thing, an Oregon thing, a Washington thing, a West Coast thing for obvious reasons, as you know, Polynesians are, of course, Pacific Islanders. Ohio State's becoming a real destination for Polynesian football players. Um, you know, you have JT Tuimolau looking to come to Ohio State. You have um, you have Naote Ote now looking to come to Ohio State. Um, Good news for Ohio State. Bad news for us is trying to pronounce these things. <laughs> well, yeah, that's. You know, sometimes we have to make sacrifices as podcasters. Yes, it's, it's a sacrifice we're willing to make here yes. on the show. <laughs> and then, of course, you have, uh, you know, Haskell Garrett, who's on the team. Um, you have lots, uh, lots of very talented football players already on the team with Polynesian roots. And I think, that, um, excuse me, I said Haskell Garrett. I was talking about Tommy Tojai, um, who has now left the team. But yeah, it's, I, I think it's... Um, yeah, it's 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 great for Ohio State um, because, you know, there's been a wide, you know, if you look at the number of people of Polynesian descent in the country versus the large percentage that they're making up in football, 
it's obviously something, you know, culturally or whatever the case might be that white guy talking about race and feeling nervous about it is what's happening right now. But it, it's I, it's nothing but great for Ohio State, in my opinion. Yep, yep, absolutely here. Uh, let's see here. We are 25 minutes in, Jared. Uh, do you want to talk about this last one here and then we'll... I think we um, want to talk about the last this this next player because like JTT should he come to Columbus like Neoteote if he should come to Columbus Wilfredo Abar looks to rumor has it uh committed to Ohio State and an additional rumor on top of that appears to potentially we don't know we don't know any of these players are coming to Ohio State or not so let me let me throw all the qualifying words in there potentially reclassifying to 2021, which means he'd be eligible to join the team right away. That's that's great. Ohio State had a couple extra spots in 2021, especially with what is appearing to be a large number of players transferring out. They have more room in the 2021 class than they do in the 2022 class. So this is amazing news for Ohio State. Not only are they getting a talented pass rusher, but they're able to slot him in the 2021 class, which makes Wilfredo Abar just that much more attractive, A, because you get him right away, and B, because you have more room in that class than you're probably going to have room in this upcoming 2022 class. Now, according to... Now, it, th these numbers are a bit weird because... He hasn't actually reclassified to 2021 yet. So I'm about to give you his his rankings, where he ranks as a player. But know that these are rankings against 2022 players, even though he'd be reclassifying to 2021. Slightly confusing, but but work with me here. It should still give you a good idea of what we're working with here. Yep, yep. So we um, shall wait and 6 see. 6'4", 240, national rank 164, number nine edge rusher in the class. Number one player from the state of Connecticut. Now, that's a state you don't hear too often that Ohio State really gets players out of. Michigan, on the other hand, Michigan loves Connecticut. Why? I don't know. But yeah, it's, it's not it's not a deep talent football state by any means. But I mean, I mean, they just got, they just got themselves a three star running back over the weekend. Right. Let's 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 not let's not trash the kid in an effort in an effort to trash Michigan. But yeah, the recruiting is not going well. Not going well in the state of Michigan right now. But uh, Wilfredo Abar, again, if all the rumors are correct, huge win for Ohio State on multiple levels. Not only is this guy a top 200 player in the 2022 class, not only is he a top 10 edge rusher in the 2022 class, but you also are, like I said, essentially cheating. It's not cheating, but you're placing him in the 2021 class which is just bonus, absolute bonus. Mm -hmm. So Ohio State potential adding two edge rushers to a recruiting class that we thought was done four months ago. Yeah. That's a win, 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 baby. Exciting times in the wasteland. <laughs> wasteland. This ain't no wasteland. No. It should be, uh, but it's not. We're having fun today. We are. All right, Kyle. Now let's do some ads. All right. Why don't you kick us off with some coffee news from our good friends over at the Iron Bean Coffee Company? Sure thing. Um, I believe the last couple, I think I did. I don't think I've talked about the dark roast in a while. So let's let's talk a couple dark roasts. Let's talk about the Odin. Uh, the Odin. I'm sorry, I had to burp there. I was able to keep it quiet, but I was not able to keep it down. So. Apologies. Let's let's try this again. The Odin. Uh, the Odin is a dark roast coffee made with 100% Arabica beans to give you the edge and confidence to slay your day. USDA certified organic fair trade uh, ensures you're getting the highest quality coffee beans. Taste smooth, never bitter, subtle notes of earth and chocolate, low acidity without affecting the natural flavor. Does that one sound good, Kyle? That sounds delicious. All right, let, let's 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 try another dark roast. Let's go with the Integrity. The Integrity is their flagship coffee. It's their mainstay of the selection. 
uh, is rich, dark, and screaming, don't go gentle. Um, this is one of their, like, they're saying if you're an espresso person, this is their recommendation. If you're going to make some, if you're going to make some espresso, go with the integrity. Um, organic Peruvian beans with notes of dark chocolate and black cherry. Sounds like a cherry cordial in a coffee cup to me. Mm -hmm. I can't go wrong there. All right. Should I do one more, Kyle? Yes. All right. Let's do the drink from the skull of your enemy. Drink from the skull of your enemy. Uh, smooth, never bitter, uh, subtle notes of earth and chocolate, just like the Odin. But um, this one also has like some like uh, a bit of a licorice note to it um uh let's see roast coffee 100 percent arabica beans um also some uh, cardamom notes uh sweet tobacco strong cedar wine and spice thick and creamy i know i i i i did not nail that one from an ad read standpoint so let me just try that again You'll find notes of strong cedar, sweet tobacco, wine and spice, very thick, creamy, chocolatey. Again, that's the drink from your skull of your enemy. I got it the second time. But you can find those coffees and a, like that's they got more dark roast than just that. And I didn't even touch on any of the flavored coffees or any of the medium roast or any any of the other ones. Lot huge coffee selection over at ironbeancoffee.com. All of it's great. That's ironbeancoffee.com. Again, Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. This episode is also brought to you by our good friends over at the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Uh, let's, let's name some of those seasonings that you could buy your father since you did not wish him a happy Father's Day. Or if you did, what's up? You did already. Here, here's, here's the gift you can get him for, for a little late Father's Day gift. Uh, let's start with the old fashioned. Old fashioned, it's, it mimics the classic drink. Um, and they believe that they've nailed it. Sweet bourbony and the right, just the right kick of bitter. The Mad Hatter. It's a salty citrus pepper blend. It's great for those who love that salt with a kick. Great as a finishing salt as well to put on your Bloody Marys or other drinks. Uh, the Kerry Steak Seasoning. One of just... <coughs> One of my one of my one of my all time favorites, probably my first seasoning I tried over at the Mad Canadian BBQ dot com. Um, they say it's with any with any steak on the grill, Montreal steak seasoning should really be part of the discussion. You can't go wrong with the savory, sweet heat seasoning that goes on anything from pork chops to T bones. Uh, and the last one here, Jared, the Brits blend. The Brits blend is it's a very same mix of spices that. Mrs. Mad Canadian uses every time she makes chili. I know it's not chilly weather, but why not? Uh, uh, you know, the right it's, still, of heat. it's still salsa weather and yes. it goes great in salsa. Yes, it's the right amount of heat and savory. It goes great on those chilly fall mornings or in salsa. And this well go, goes well with potato salads. Check those and much, much more over at the Mad Canadian BBQ.com. Again, that is the Mad Canadian BBQ.com. Use that promo code SLOOPCAST10. At checkout for ten percent off your entire order, Mackinney Barbecue Company, where they have your butt covered. Okay, Kyle. So we talked a little bit about the twenty twenty one class, which is not a thing I felt like we were still going to be talking about in June of twenty twenty one. We normally wrap that up in February of twenty twenty one, but here we are. It's not been a normal year, Kyle. It's not been a normal year. So we're still talking about the twenty twenty one class for some reason. Let's move forward. Let's talk about the 2022 class. Um, I talked about uh, Kyle did not get to participate in that episode. We we had a guest star, Alex Gleitman, for that episode. But a few weeks ago, I did a mock class, a mock class for the 2022. And uh, we've not talked about 2022 in detail since. So I wanted to follow that up a bit and maybe give you some updates on where Ohio State stands with some of uh, not just those players, but maybe some other players. So I think I think this is a great place to start. Uh, Kyle, where would you like to start? You want to do good news or bad news? Uh, let's start at the top. What you have here, Jared. Uh, we got a kid plays defensive line, plays DL over in California, one of the top hundred nationally here. We're talking about Hero Kanyu. 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 I'm going canoe. 
Okay. But I don't know. I don't have a pronunciation guide for him yet. Uh, yeah, uh, defensive tackle, just shy of 300 pounds. Um, as Kyle pointed out, he's uh, top 100 nationally in the composite. Feeling real good about Hero. Um, one of the things I talked about with Alex when we did the uh, the mock draft a few weeks back was, you know, I, I had placed two defensive tackles into that class. One of them, Caden Curry, who I still feel great about. I still feel like Caden Curry comes into the class. But I, I said to Alex, I, I got a bunch of other guys who could be that other defensive tackle slot. And at the time, um, at that time, I believe if memory serves, um, I went with, if I can find it, Dominic James. Now, I'm not saying Dominic James um, or just Nick James, depending upon how you want to go about that. Um, is out of it by any means. But if I were making the mock today, I think I would go with Hero instead of Dominic James. Um, now, that being said, I'm also. I'm also not saying that Ohio State is definitely only taking two defensive tackles, so it could be it could be three. It could be James Hero and Curry. That's entirely possible. But if I'm sticking the two defensive tackles, I'm now going to place Hero slightly above uh, from a likelihood standpoint, from a me feeling like they're likely to join the Ohio State class. Um, I think I'm putting Hero slightly above Dominic at this point. All right. Uh, next up here, Jared, we have a linebacker staying out in California. Um, Ernest Green, again, uh, another top. Another That's top. an offensive guard, Kyle. Yeah, it okay. uh, 24 7 started doing this thing where they don't call guys. I get why you saw that. It looks like uh inside linebacker if you just glance oh, at it. Real I, see, quick. I see now. I see what they did here. Yep. Yep. Offensive lineman. I apologize. Yeah, offensive uh, lineman, Ernest Green, uh, top top hundred in the in the 2022 class, number two inside offensive lineman that's really weird how they did that but uh the number 24 two seven the has stopped class. classifying guys as guards and centers they've just lumped them into like interior offensive linemen now it's a recent change over at the 24 7 site not a big fan just because centers are unique i i agree uh but yeah bellflower california saint john bosco uh I, I when I did the class again, if I'm talking about uh, I'm going to reference that mock draft class I did with uh, with Alex a little while ago. Alex was not a fan of my offensive line mock. And uh, he's probably right. I was being a little probably a little too pessimistic. Um, I, I still really like um, some of my mock draft, uh, especially Carter Smith the offensive tackle from Olin Tangy Liberty. I'm sticking with, with Carter, uh, with Carter Smith. Uh, but Alex was right. I was being too pessimistic. So one of the guys who I've decided, or if I were redoing my mock now, which I'm not, we're just talking. Um, if I, but if I were redoing my mock today, I feel like I'd probably include Ernest Green in it. Uh, Ohio State, he's uh, visited Ohio State. I feel like the relationship there is strong. I'm I'm not saying it's definitely happening, uh, but I feel I feel decent about it now. I feel I feel pretty decent about Ohio State and Ernest Green and their relationship, and that could ultimately end up with him joining the class. Gotcha. All right, next year. Oh, here we go. Another wired receiver to talk about here for the 2020. To class um out in georgia here koja antwi uh we met we, we mentioned him previously here and he's coming up again here so what you got the latest with kojo here uh so once again gonna reference the mock draft episode i'm i'll link to the mock draft episode if you didn't see it i'm, I'm gonna link to it you guys can can go watch it um i only added one additional wide receiver into what was at the time Ohio State's two wide receivers. Now, Kyle, if I can take a moment to brag. I nailed it. I nailed it. I said Caleb Brown would join the recruiting class. And guess what he did since we released that episode? 
He joined the damn recruiting class. <laughs> Nailed it. Um, but I only added the one wide receiver. Um, mm-hmm. Alex at the time told me, uh, you know, you should probably just do one running back and probably a fourth wide receiver instead. And okay. because Alex actually knows what he's talking about, unlike me, um, I've decided he's right. <laughs> so um, I've gone searching for a fourth wide receiver who I think Ohio State has a decent opportunity with. And I think the, uh, the, uh, the and I'm not again, I'm not saying it's a for sure thing, but I think if I'm looking for one wide receiver who I think Ohio State has a real decent opportunity with, who I think has a good relationship with, far from over, far from certain. But if I'm picking one guy, I'm picking one guy. I'm going with Kojo at the moment. Gotcha. The so the crystal ball is with him. All, kind of, all over the damn place. It's all over the place. There, just to tell all over the place. So earlier in the year, uh, Bill Kurlick put in his crystal ball to go um, for Kojo to go to Ohio State, and then back in mid mid February. On the same day, we had two to Georgia, one to Texas A&M, and both having like five and six um, of their confidence scores. So nobody knows. <laughs> and nobody knows yet. People are just planting flags at this point. That's what's happening. Yep. So here, here's, here's, here's a little dirty secret here. about that crystal ball. You guys want a dirty secret about that crystal ball? The earlier you put it in, the more points you get in those crystal ball rankings. So there is an incentive to just put your flag there and then you can just remove it later if you want to. Mm-hmm. Just as long as it's not on, on um, artificial turf. Flags ha. don't stick on that. Ha. All right, Jared. Oh, um, by the way, Kojo currently has a commitment date of July 9th. Yes. So what it was Kyle and I always like to say, if, if they, if they have a date, they've made their decision. Um, I don't know why I'm real pessimistic that he's actually going to stick to that. Like, if you ask me, Kyle, ask me. Hey, Jared. Yeah. Did Kojo make his decision already? No. Okay. I I feel I feel like that July. If you say who's he going to commit to on July 9th? No one. I feel like he's just not going to do it. And even if he does do it, I also feel like it's like just not the end of the story yet. So that that's where I'm at with Kojo. Even if he doesn't commit, even if he doesn't commit, I, or even if he does commit, I don't feel like it's over. And but I have a feeling that he's just going to cancel that commitment date. Is is and like I said, even if he does, I feel like it might not be the final say. Gotcha. All right, moving on here, Jared. Uh, Got to move a little bit quicker here. Um, Addison no, Nichols, uh, got, the got four players lineman of out of another Georgia kid here. Actually, the next few here we have Georgia. So, um, Addison. Right outside the top 100 here, number three, uh, inside offensive lineman for the 2022 class. Uh, no crystal balls so far for him, but. Oh, that, that that's that's the other commitment. Watch. So never mind. Move along. What, what you got for Addison here? Yeah. <laughs> uh, almost a certainty he's coming to Ohio State. I have no idea why there's no crystal balls for him yet. Um, I feel great about it. Uh, by the way, he also has an opportunity to play tackle. I know 24-7 has him listed as an interior offensive lineman. I think there is an opportunity for, I think he'll come into Ohio State and try and prove himself as a tackle. Now, does he end up getting kicked inside? Maybe. But I think Ohio State is going to give him an opportunity to be a tackle. And I I think it happens. Like, I, I had Addison Nichols in my mock that I did with Alex a few weeks back. And this is me like doubling down on it. I'm 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 all in on Addison Nichols um, in my little cheat sheet that I have for these recruiting classes. I, I have him as my highest possible confidence score right now. And if right, I don't, I need here. to update it. Yeah. Next up here. Um, and I got a little update here on JTT, but I'll save that at the end here. Uh, uh, Kristen Miller, Christian Miller. We'll no, you were you were right the first time. It's Kristen. Okay, okay Kristen Miller, uh, defensive lineman. Again, here's another kid out of Georgia. Here, defensive lineman, six four, two eighty five, um, just outside of the top hundred nationally as well. Yeah, but, 
crystal ball is all over the place with USC and Georgia so far. Yeah. Um, those people who have it to Georgia should, should reconsider. Uh, he, uh, he appears to be USC bound. This was a guy who I didn't put into my mock class, but uh, still had a high potential for joining Ohio State. Uh, I think he had a very high potential. And I think Ohio State felt really great about it. I know some insiders were basic, were like placing him in their mocks. Um, but uh, apparently he went to USC and USC wowed the hell out of him. Um, he is, he's canceled. He's canceled his official visit to Ohio State. Now, he goes to USC. He cancels his visit, his official visit to Ohio State. That's terrible news. Now, some of you might be hearing me say that and say, but Jared, he got on the he got on he got on an interview or social media or something and said that, no, Ohio State's still in it. And he still hopes to take his official visit and da, da, da. Watch what they do, not what they say. Watch what they do, not what they say. That's 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 all I'm getting. That's that, that's. Hey, did you hear so and so said they had a really great visit? Yeah, literally every kid ever. He goes on ninety nine percent of the time. The kid takes an official visit to Ohio State, gets on the phone with someone, says, "I loved it. It was great. It couldn't have been any better." Literally all of them, except for like one out of a hundred. So I don't, I don't care what he says. It doesn't matter. Watch what they do, not what they say. Uh, and I'm, I'm giving up on Kristen Miller personally. Gotcha. All right. Um, Dallin Hayden yes. uh, running, running back out of Tennessee. Now we already have it. We already, we already have um quarter or quarterback. Wow. Running back out of Tennessee as well with uh, master Teague. Yep. Can we, can we make it another running back yes. out of Tennessee? Yes. Put him, put him in, put him in. That's, that's how I, that's how good I feel about. That's how good I feel about it right now. That's how good I feel about him right now. Put him in the class. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is um, in the top 250. So a little bit out of the range of what we typically underrated. see from Ohio state, but underrated. I'm underrated. Jared says I'm, he's underrated. Um, Ohio. This is something again, I, I put, I put Dallin Hayden in my mock draft a couple of weeks ago when Alex was on the show. Um, at that time, I put two running backs in. Well, I've dropped Amari Hampton. I've kept Dallin Hayden. So that's where we're at right now. And when I told Alex about me putting Dallin Hayden in there, he told me that Ohio State absolutely loves him. He's the only running back they need in this class. and they would have accepted a they would have accepted his commitment last football season. That's how much they like him. This isn't a backup plan. They adore him. They want him. He took his official visit. What is he's as far as I think he's still on his official visit as we are recording this. Uh, but he took his official visit for what everyone listening is last weekend, currently our reality, but last weekend. And I, Kyle, you want to know how good I feel about Dallin Hayden? How, 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 how good do you feel? I feel so good about Dallin Hayden that I'm at least somewhat scared that he's like, everyone's listening to this. Like, yeah, dumbass, he committed. Like, I feel like there's a decent chance. There's a real decent chance that he commits. After we record, but before we release that, mm -hmm. that's how good I feel about Dallin Hayden right now. Yeah. All right. Last one here, Jared. You have here in big capital letters. Yes. Surprised you don't have this bold here or underlined or italicized. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Boom. Bold. All right. All right. He just has bold. So no, we just just watch. Just so we have a flip watch. We alert don't from, need to bring italics into this. All right. We we have a flip watch alert from Jared for Jaheim Singletary, the cornerback out of Robert E. Lee High School in Florida. Yeah, uh, kid out of Jacksonville. Um, has been committed to Ohio State since January, but these five-star corners from Florida, it's just, if you remember, Sean Wade committed to Ohio State early, and we sweated that recruitment the entire time. 
Singletary is still taking his visits. George is a threat. Florida is a threat. This is this is not a certain day. There are members of. Oh, there are targets, not members of the class. They're not members. There are kids who aren't yet members of the class who I feel way better about joining this class and actually signing with Ohio State in December than I feel about Singletary right now. Mm-hmm. Feel way better about Dallin Hayden, Caden Curry, Addison Nichols. I feel way be- I feel way more confident about those guys joining Ohio State than I do about Jaheim Singletary right now, who's actually committed. Now, if you force me to put a number on it, I still say he's likely to join Ohio State. He's more likely than not to join Ohio State, but it's absolutely a situation we need to keep an eye on. Yep. Now, Jared, we got a we got a um, a cryptic tweet here. Okay, I like cryptic tweets. What does JTT, Antonio Gates, Tony Gonzalez, Ricky Dudley, and Art Schlitt- I can never pronounce his name. Schleister. <laughs> Thank you, Schleister. Thank you. All have in common. I uh, um, I don't know. They both they both played two sports. Okay. I I mean yeah, JTT's a. Very good basketball player. Mm -hmm. So there's rumors here, and I don't want to spill the beans too much because it is kind of behind paywall, but there is there is a you can probably put two and two together here, but there is another coach that he got to talk to this weekend. Hmm. How about that? Hmm. How about that? Interesting, interesting things. We're constantly finding out about this JTT weekend visit. Thank God for the Buckeye scoop. <laughs> Kyle, right, go ahead and just point go ahead and just point up for me real quick everyone Buck, buckeye scoop you have to do it it's on your side of the graphic just point up this yeah. oh well yeah you can do that too but, but, all, <laughs> but also the frame the frame around your head right now yeah yes. there, there, there you go all right all right jared um let's get into some ask swoopcast questions here but before we ask we answer some questions here we had our first trivia night this last yeah. Thursday. The, the, our first Buckeye Swoopcast trivia night. We had about ten people that joined, and we had a uh, we had a um, lot of fun. It was just a bunch of questions that um, our our homie Sun Card put together. Yeah, and a, like a Sun quick... Card took one hundred percent responsibility of all of this. It yes. was one hundred percent on him. I just want to say that for the record, he was yep. great. He took yeah, it all he did on great. There, there, there was a lot of good questions. And I'm a super lot of, appreciative. Yeah, a lot of great questions there. A lot of, uh, I don't want to say it was, and I know, Jared, there were some questions that you were upset about. Well, I just, it was slightly misleading. That's all I'm going to say. It was slightly <laughs> misleading. Some of it was Suncard's fault. Some of it was not Suncard's fault. But ultimately, I feel like everyone who had a better score than me cheated. All right, well, then I because guess that's I the reality I choose to live in. So, and- so then- Jared, are you going to yeah. look me in the eyes? You cheated. And say that I cheated. You cheated. You cheated. You cheated. You cheated. You cheated. Okay. Well, Listen, either way, whether, whether that's the world says, I need to live in so that I don't cry. Therefore, it's 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 true. <laughs> Listen. So so Ga- Ga- Gangland ended up winning. <laughs> I'm just he cheated hard here. And Jared, he Jared just cheated gonna, so hard. Jared's just going to just be jared right now so everyone that, cheated except for me <laughs> uh but gangland ended up winning there um definitely definitely want to do that again in the near future so if you want to, to come in into one of these uh trivia night upcoming trivias um hit up hit up hit us up in the discord become a patreon and but, 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 real, real quick for the record it's not just for patrons it's for members of the discord so there it's free is, is all i'm trying to say Okay. Well, if you like our content, become a Patreon then. <laughs> yeah. I mean, still, 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 still join the Patreon. Yeah. But uh, Trivia Night was for all members of the Discord, free or not. Yeah, we, we, had, we had 10 people who joined, which, yeah, we all had a good, we had a good time there. Uh, all right. To some questions here, Jared. Nomad. Within the existing conference and CFP structure, what is one rule that can create greater intra-conference parity? The existing 
yes. conference and college football playoff structure? Uh, well, the answer to that is expand. Like, you, you can't. You can't. With four teams, you can't. This is why they're expanding it to 12. I, how, you can't have parity in a four-team playoff. It's just nope. not possible. Nope. A- you, unless you, you guarantee one of those spots to a non-power five, which would be ridiculous. I don't want that. You can't guarantee one of those spots to a non-power five when it's just four teams. 100%. 100%. Now, when it's just 12 teams, you, you could. They're not going to. And no Pac-12. The Pac-12 doesn't automatically get a spot. Did you see that, Kyle? See, the current, the current proposal that is being discussed basically says the top four ranked conference champions. The Pac-12 is like, no, all the Power Five should get an auto bid. Oh, isn't it funny that it's just the Pac-12 asking for that? It's only the Pac. Big Twelve didn't didn't have any issues with it. SEC didn't have any issues with it. Big Ten doesn't have even Notre Dame. Notre Dame, who's not even in a conference, doesn't have an issue with it. Big Ten doesn't have an issue with it. The only people who have an issue with it are the Pac-12. Isn't that convenient? You weak, weak whiners. All right, Jared. <laughs> Nomad, one more question. Will Ohio State starting quarterback be the will be this year's Big Ten Offensive Player of the Year? If not, who else has the best odds? Ah, um, mm. I I don't. You know, I'm real ignorant about what's happening in the rest of the Big Ten right now, if I'm being super honest with you. I'm looking forward to uh, picking up some some magazines. Um, There's been so much. First off. A lot of those teams didn't spend a ton of time on the field last year when they did have players on the field. It wasn't typically their full roster because players were being left out. Like, how many players did these teams, because now, like, no one lost eligibility. Last, I don't know. I really don't know. Who outside of Ohio State could potentially be the you, offensive you could, player of the year? Well, you, you could say here, depending on health-wise, maybe Penix. Penix, I think, possibly, depending on how well the have a good year he he has i mean he's got uh fry fogel back again so he's got he's got a really good target back um the kid out of what uh wisconsin mertz, mertz i i like well, mertz possibly. i don't know if i like mertz this year does that make sense like not mm-hmm. not to like offensive rookie or not rookie but just offensive player of the year yep to that level I like Mertz. I don't like him that much yet. Yeah. But I uh, think, yeah, sure. It's because it's it's probably a quarterback. Like if it's probably a quarterback and if it's not a quarterback, it's probably a running back. Well, if you're going to go with a running back, a name to keep an eye out for wearing uh, black and yellow, Tyler Goodson. I don't see it. Okay. And all... It, when was the last time Iowa had an offensive player of the year? <laughs> I just yeah. I'm just throwing just throwing names. No, no, out you're, there. Right. you're right. Just throwing you're names right. out there. All right. You're right. Um, you're right. Last questions here. We have from Buckeye Zach. Um, he has eight and a half over under. It is eight and a half over under your Minnesota score prediction for week one. Over. Ohio State has a lot of new guys joining the defense you're going to have a new corner you're going to have potentially one or two new safeties you're going to have three new linebackers over like and i'm not saying ohio state's defense is going to be i just don't expect them to be hold a big 10 team to under 10 points good week one yeah. I'm not saying Minnesota is some sort of offensive powerhouse, but they're a good team. They're I 
I personally am placing them like number two in the Big Ten West right now, right yep. behind Wisconsin. Uh, that that's where I'm putting them right now. You know, m- I but yeah, I just I don't see holding them to under ten points. Yeah, week right, one qu- with that many new players. Last question from Buckeye Zach: Will Nomad ever share the beer? I don't know what that means. Do you know what that means? I don't. Maybe maybe uh, <laughs> maybe Buckeye Zach can answer for that either. Why, either why did you read Discord? It? You know what, Kyle? Somewhere. Why did you read it? <laughs> when did he get a reaction out of you? Fair enough. All right, all right that, that's all. That's all the questions here, Jared. For today's episode. Oh, look at us. We're actually ending at about an hour. Should should I not ruin it by just doing like a short thing? Hey, everyone, uh, go to the sloopcast.com. You'll find lots of cool stuff there. Um, it's actually just like a bunch of links to our other stuff. That's all it is. Um, that's it. That's it. That's all I got. Uh, just go to the sloopcast.com. Check. We have links to merch, links to the discord. Like, you know what? Like one thing. If I'm going to plug one thing, join the Discord. It's free. That's it. Join the Discord. Discord.thesloopcast.com. It's a free chat room, essentially a, a, a modern chat room. It's a free, it's just, an, it's a thing you can download on your phone. It's an app for your phone. Go to discord.thesloopcast.com. That's it. And you can just, you can say nothing. You can jump right into the conversation. If you really like it, there are premium channels that you can become a patron, but you don't have to worry about that right now. Just join the Discord. That's it. Yes. That's that's all the thing I want to do right now. Another team, another team in the uh, the black and gold, Jared. Yes. There's black. Played their last black game. Gold. They played their last game crew, at Historic Crew, crew Stadium. Black and yellow. Play their last game at the historic Crew Stadium in a very fitting score of Dose Cero. Nice. Yeah. Uh, by Crew Stadium, by Map Free. It was, it was, uh, it was nice great, knowing you. Great 22 years. I mean, just the first just of history, just of history in general, just what that stadium has meant for the MLS, for the Columbus crew for usa soccer both yeah. men's and women's yeah well and yeah. it was the first perfe- purpose-built professional soccer soccer stadium in the entire country it was yes and yes. in many ways i'm sad to see it go but in many ways i'm really looking forward to the new state like all, all the beer selections well yeah that, that's that's a big part of it um <laughs> Yeah, I, in, in many ways, I still feel like they could have renovated that stadium. And I'm not saying they made the wrong choice because I, I don't I don't understand the financials or anything else behind it. But I am sad to see it go. Uh, I Part of me, like I said, still wishes they had just given the existing stadium a facelift. I feel like. But whatever, that's not the direction they went. Um yep. I don't feel like the location was nearly as limiting as everyone thought everyone else thought it was. But that's it's, it, that that that's over. That's that's long gone. And the new stadium's beautiful and the new stadium has lots of features and the new stadium has an amazing location right behind Clipper Stadium which is right next to a bunch of concert venues and Nationwide Arena. So like the Arena District just got even more arena e. So it's great. As far as the, again, I, I feel like could have, but they didn't. And since they went with the choice of building a new stadium, almost every choice since has been perfect. You 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 you, you fucked up the logo. <laughs> <laughs> you fucked up the logo. Let's, like, I'm so I we went back to the crew, and that's what's important. We we jump we dropped that Columbus SC bullshit. But you fucked up the logo, guys. But everything else about all of the decisions since then has been perfect. Yeah. Or reverted to perfect. <laughs> you did Jared, fuck up the logo. That's it, that's it for today's episode. <laughs> Kyle's like, Jared, you're done, buddy. You're done. Yeah. Kyle's like a bartender cutting me off. <laughs> Which You're done here. You're done here. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. Yeah. 
Uh, tonight's ending music will be brought to you by a band called Courtney from Work. I love Courtney from Work. Um, they have a new single out. The new single is called Caught Wasted. They have an album release party. I should have written this down. I didn't, but you can look it up for yourself. Um, but they have an album release party. It, I, I know it's in July. I think it's the 17th. July 17th. Um, it uh, Ace of Cups on High Street, north of campus. Go check them out. Amazing live shows. They're amazing performers. You'll hear the song at the end of the show. I, l- I have a Courtney from Work sticker on my car. I own a Courtney from Work t-shirt. So I, I love these guys. They're tremendous. Like I said, they'll be at Ace of Cups sometime in July. I think it's the 17th, but uh, it's an album release show. Um, and they have a brand new single out, which I'm going to play for you at the end of today's show. Uh, it's called Caught Wasted. So with all of that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is Courtney from Work. Hi, YouTube. Hi, Kyle. Is it August yet? No, 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 no. I don't I don't want it to be August yet. I'm enjoying June. Got lots of lots of great recruiting stuff. Um, weather's nice ish. Like it, it was a little hot today. It was a little guys. You want you want some insider information like. I sweat my ass off today because I was doing all the yard work and I just I I don't I like by a miracle stop sweating in time for the show <laughs> by a miracle. I have, I have a fan on me right now. It is I, I cannot stop sweating. But like like I said, luckily, I, I did. That's some that's some insider info for you right there. Living down here in North Carolina. Has made me hate summer. I yeah, I mean we have our bad weeks um in Ohio as well, but um hey, at least it's not Savannah. Yeah, I guess there's that. <laughs> <laughs> My sister lived in Savannah for years and it, it was oppressive for a long time because of them being right on the ocean and yeah. Yeah. All right, I think that's it. Let's go ahead and wrap it up, Jared. All right. Once again, I would like to thank Courtney from work for ending today's show. And I'd like to thank the Iron Bean Coffee Company for sponsoring today's show. Uh, Let's uh, talk about some of the dark roast, Kyle. Let's turn it up a notch and go to a black roast. That's right. We're going up a notch. We're going to the black roast. This is the fear. No evil. Uh, The fear. No evil is a very, very, very dark roast coffee made from 100 percent original. Arabica beans, there's there is a qualifier in front of Arabica beans, and I do not know how to pronounce it. Uh, USDA USDA certified organic fair trade certified uh, highest quality coffee beans available. Um, let's see. This is a rich black roast coffee void of all light. The sheen is like polished armor. The feel is like cocoa butter. It is smooth. The smell is smoky and exotic, uh, rich taste. It's bold. It's a bold coffee. You guys, I I think is what I'm trying to say. Uh, maybe not for the weak at heart. Like you, I think, I think this is a, I think this is a coffee for coffee drinkers. Like this is a coffee for coffee drinkers. This is a I drink my coffee black. Coffee. Not not for the faint of heart. This this is this is this is for the professionals like leave leave this one of the professionals, you guys. Also, another dark roast coffee available to you would be the Rocco. Now, the Rocco is available in both a medium and a a dark a dark roast. Um, But you know, it's still an excellent coffee. Uh, The taste is smooth, never bitter with subtle notes of strawberry, blueberry and toffee, low in acidity. Um, Like all of the coffees, you can get it either 
uh, whole bean or pre-ground. Um, this is an Ethiopian natural processed coffee. Um, just a, um, it's a deeper body, rich experience coffee. I, I think it's just, it's, it's a Ethiopian natural. It's a classic Ethiopian natural cup of coffee. Uh, but I've only talked about dark coffees this episode, which there's still like a whole host of flavored coffees and medium coffees that I haven't even talked about. And I think you're probably just going to have to go to ironbeancoffee.com to, uh, to learn more about those. So you can uh, go to, like I said, ironbeancoffee.com, uh, check out all of the great coffee options because Iron Bean Coffee is, in fact, America's local coffee roaster. This episode was also brought to you by our good friends over at the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. I uh, mentioned about a number of their seasonings at the top middle of the show. Let me go into some of the box sets, or actually the three box sets that they have over at the MadCanadianBBQ.com. First one is the Sweet Heat. It is their seat, it's their box package with a little bit of sweet, a little bit of heat. Four Horsemen, Discord, Old Fashioned, and the Two Border. I, I call this the Chicken Wings set, and I think that I, since I called that, he put that into the description, so I'm going to take credit for that. You so it's, it's, their, it's their Chicken Wings set here. Uh, the the second one that they have here is the Just Send It. This is their this is their versatile seasoning. Not sure what to get. Get the Just Send It. it has four very versatile seasonings: S and P Bud, Snoring Heat. The Cajun and the smoked. Can't go wrong with any of those seasonings at all. Or you want a little bit of everything, why not do the whole hog itself? One of each of the seasonings that the Mad Canadian has developed in this Mad Lab over at the MadCanadianBBQ.com. Be sure at checkout to use that promo code SLUCAST10 at checkout for 10% off even more off your entire order. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, where they have your butt covered. <laughs> 